set it. On the other hand, the theory expects lambda to be both constant and it's constant because of spontaneous decisions by customers themselves, individual customers themselves, without collusion, to want or not want to come into the queue system. Okay, so that's the invisible expectation linking lambda and mu. And there is a more concrete uh, formula also in some sense, or constraint, since we have learned the word, uh, linking up lambda and mu. And that is that lambda as a constant, as a number, such as 2.5, such as uh, 4 here on my in my example, must be strictly without the equal sign, let me stress that, huh? without the equal sign, less than mu. So example, 4 is less than 6. Okay, so strictly less than mu. So that we can allow the system <coughs> to survive. Okay. So let's write that as a criteria um, required for long-term Q system survival. To survive means that the Q component, the Q part of the Q system, right, is not expected to go towards infinity. Now, the expected part is important to make sense out of it because infinity is a mathematical concept. Nothing on Earth or in the universe is actually infinity because uh, we may have a billion, trillions, uh, zillion, zillion stars in the universe. Still, that's a finite number compared to really, 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 really unimaginably huge concept called uh, infinity. So that is a mathematical notion. And of course, in an earthly business, everything else even will be smaller. Even if you count the sand on earth going down deep to the core, uh, it doesn't go to infinity. So then what do you mean by going towards infinity when nothing on the left-hand side goes towards infinity? And that idea is that uh, the Q size, the Q size currently three, then grows to five, then grows to 10, then grows to 20. 30, 3,000, 5 million, right? That number is expected to, not that it has reached, not that it has reached, but looking at this, looking at the trend, looking at the formula, there's no way it will shrink on its own. So it is therefore known already that if we let it run, then in time, it will reach infinity, in, in infinite time, right? Uh, so because of that that expectation that it will go towards infinity when infinite amount of time is allowed it means that the q component does go it is expected to go towards infinity that means it is not surviving and that means you must have uh, not respected this criteria so it is important that we in order for the q system to survive we must ensure that this criteria is upheld. Now, what happens if it is not? So in my bank example here, suppose momentarily, right, just for the next 15 minutes, a huge group of tourists came in um, trying to do some slightly larger quantity of foreign exchange transactions. So there's a spike, right? And this group of tourists just happens randomly by chance to want to come to this bank branch, perhaps in Orchard Road or somewhere, uh, and today and this hour. So there's a spike momentarily and Lambda momentarily went through the roof. So be instead of four, it became um, 30. So yes, momentarily 30, breaking the rule. But remember, this rule is more like talking about long-term lambda, not a momentary lambda, not an instantaneous arrival rate. Clear? All right. In fact, there are no two lambdas. There's only one lambda. Lambda always refers to long-term average, a constant. Now, this group of tourists, of 30 tourists coming in, there's a spike. It is not a constant behavior, right? After that, another group of 30 tourists. After that, another group of 30 tourists. Not true. Only 
random by random chance uh, suddenly there's this spike okay so if that's the case then we know that uh, or, or we hope or the bank will impose measures or whatever it is uh, because of other people seeing that there's a crowded group of tourists in this bank branch they kind of shy away right I think we better go to another branch and automatically in by natural cause uh, the next hour or so the actual arrival rate will be somehow decreased by sheer fact that the uh, you know inside the branch it seems a bit crowded it seems a bit noisy other people don't like that so they automatically uh, shun this particular branch and so the the actual arrival rate drops and if you average it up it might just come back to four uh, for that day four per hour for that day so does the queue in that bank branch survive yes because uh, we're not talking about momentary kind of behavior now let's instead talk about what if it is actually a long-term uh, scenario that the lambda is greater than mu now allow me to say suppose uh, that the customers are dispatched all right by military okay you go you go you go right and there are lots and lots of customers ready to be dispatched by the military to send to this bank, particular bank branch. Just imagine that first, right? So I, what, what I want to create is a constant stream of customers who are coming in uh, every hour. So if we dispatch 10 per hour, and the cashier officer is still able to only serve an average of six per hour. So what happens? In the first hour, starting with nobody in the system, 10 queue up, we, uh, and the, customer, uh, the, the officer can clear six leaving four in the system, correct? In the next second hour, military dispatches another 10 fresh customers and the poor cashier officer can clear another six, leaving 10 plus, uh, 10 plus four, you minus six, you get eight. So we have eight, the second hour, at the end of the second hour. In, during the third hour, 10 people would have been sent into the queue so 10 plus 8, we have 18. And during that third hour, the officer could clear 6, right? Leaving us 12 people at the end of the third hour. You, can you see that progression now? At the end of every hour, net of everything, we will have four more additional customers in the queue. Not the same four customers stuck in the queue, but fresh four but it will always be there and it is always growing the initial four would have been cleared yes they are happily uh, <laughs> enjoying their life after getting the service however a fresh set of 12 people 16 people 20 people will be continuously growing inside the queue system uh, the queue part of the queue system so while each customer will ultimately be served if you come in late, you're going to wait longer and longer and longer. All right? So yes, you would be ultimately served, right? but it is going to be a very terrible waiting wait for those people coming in late. And what's worse, for the bank, the queue system is expected to grow towards infinity, the, the, queue, the queue component. right? So you can imagine that every hour, the longer you serve, the longer the queue component will become when this happens uh, we basically know that the queue system will not will not survive and what's more important is that whatever formulas and theories that we uh, we will learn in this and the next set seminar will not apply because those formulas and theory work only assuming only by assuming that the Q system will survive. In other words, more strictly speaking, lambda is less than mu. Okay, so since we already have this example in mind, every hour we have the growth of four more additional customers, right? In practice, what will happen? In practice, when, uh, for example, let's say during Chinese New Year, right? Uh, there'll be a lot of customers trying to, on the, roughly the same one or two days, trying to get a lot of uh, new notes. In the past, there, when there were no such ideas as pop-up ATM machines or whatever it is, uh, so people will rush to the bank branch 
to physically exchange uh, new notes, newly printed notes. When that happens, because the demand, there's a big surge, right, over one or two days. For those one or two days, the lambda will be way higher than when the entire uh, cashier officer's desk has been fully manned. Okay, so basically, lambda will, in the long run sense, be greater than mu. So that happens, that does happen. When that happens, what, hap what, what was our uh, daily experience telling us? Well, there'll be long queues, right? The, there'll be a lot of crowds and the queue will even kind of eke out from the branch itself and people started queuing outside with long chain of people, right? And the bank will be uh, scrambling to get more security guards and laying out the metal bars to kind of form a physical queue outside the bank branch. So the whole <laughs> phenomenon might drag until uh, afternoon across noon and while normally the bank might close at five but seeing this long snaking queue they will start to plan and say that well let me see if every hour you can serve so many customers then da, 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 I think the cutoff is here and what happens is they will say uh, from here on no more queuing because we don't think we will be able to finish serving you by 5 p.m. when the bank closes so they're not going to extend the time Right, what they do is going to cut the queue uh, at a certain point if they are nice. right? So if they tell you in advance, from here on no more, then they are physically chopping off the lambda to zero at around 1 p.m. Okay, so the incoming actual lambda will be zero because they physically cut it off. And then if you try to think through the entire day, because after 1 p.m. no more people come in, so it's 0, 0, 0, right? If you average out the total number of customers served over, say, 8 hours, divide by 8 hours, you will find that the lambda might just fall back to 3.92, uh, sorry, uh, in this case, maybe 5.92, uh, you know, somewhat slightly less than 6. And then, that's how the system is being... Uh, uh, sort of forcefully rescued to survive. Can you see that? So, um, otherwise the bank, either the bank works till infinity to clear the queue or um, something bad will happen. And that would never happen because society will not allow for, you know, indefinitely long growing queue to, to persist. You know, something, uh, something bad will happen, right? So, uh, we now understand how to think from the theoretical point of view and from the ground issues point of view uh, just with this uh, abstract drawing here okay so we learn a few things here uh, the relationship between lambda and mu lambda mu themselves how to interpret them one over lambda one over mu how to interpret them now for all cues uh, we also talk about not just the cue itself but the just to understand a bit how the cue is being uh sort of uh, how the queue interacts with the environment so what i've just encircled and boxed is the queue system where we have the queue component of the queue system and the servicing area right consisting of one or more servers in the servicing area so there are only two components in the in the three components the queue component service area and the box the boundary so this is the queue system that we have. So now let's run the queue a little bit, let it go into action. Now we need two players because we need the, the servers. All right, let's just use one server for this uh, week. We also need a lot, a lot of customers. And collectively, we call them the calling population. They're just a set of customers who are eligible and may want the service offered by the server. Okay, so let's put it that way. Eligible because sometimes they are not qualified by social rules, by whatever it is, security, uh, uh, filtering and all that. They are not eligible. Okay, so for example, um, Primary school students might not be eligible 
right? Or it's not quite possible for them to come to a university canteen. They can, but it is in all practical purposes not likely, right? Because parents, teachers will not let them come in by themselves. Uh, they themselves may not have the money, the means, the dare to come to this strange place called universities when everyone is taller than them, right? So, uh, so they are not part of the eligible calling population for the queue system in the canteen. 